Never let anyone tell you that a story's already been told? Yeah, that's a fun one. Um, it goes back to <clears throat> being a bull in a china shop as a writer that your attack as a storyteller is so key to succeeding as a writer um, lazy writing, limp writing, it's, it's often so forgettable. And the key word in the entertainment industry is outrageousness. People go to the movies or watch a TV show or go to the theater to see something extraordinary, something different, something energizing, something fun or exciting or meaningful or cathartic. So it has to do with a rebellious streak where, you know, many people have heard the saying, there's nothing new under the sun, every story's been told. There's only seven basic stories or three basic stories or whatever. And part of me completely understands that. And part of me, that just pisses me off. It's like, you know, you can't tell me that I can't come up with something that, that you've never seen that will, it just, it's like waving a red flag in front of a bull. It, it just makes me mad. and. It, it brings out the attack in me and the, the desire to shatter people's expectations and blow people's minds and take them where they've never been and just violate their expectations, violate my own storytelling rut. You know, it's, you know, think of a movie like Being John Malkovich. You know, it's like so off the beaten track. And I'm sure there was somebody telling the writer, oh, you shouldn't do that. That's not how stories go. It's like, it's just weak. And it's, it's such a lack of adventure and a lack of courage. And, and just, you know, one of my favorite terms is attack as a storyteller. How much attack do you bring to the table? What are, what are the ways that you can dazzle an audience, take them on a ride that they've never been on? And if you accept the idea that you can't possibly come up with something that nobody's ever seen, then it, it kind of takes the wind out of your sails in a certain way. It says, you're, you're not all that creative. You can't come up with something. It's like, I, I refuse to play that way. I go the other end of the spectrum. I always want to know what are the extremes in any story idea, just to see what they are. You often, you know, you'll find yourself if you're trying to solve a story problem where you got to figure out a specific thing in a story where there's kind of a normal set of possibilities and then there's unusual possibilities and then there's extreme possibilities. And like, for instance, the Coen brothers say that if somebody can figure out our next move, if they had a week to figure it out and they can figure it out in a week, we're not gonna use it. They go way above and beyond shaking up your expectations, violating your expectations. If you're trying to solve a story problem and you have a selection of possibilities for ways you could get out of that situation or whatever, one of the things I've found is really fun is, is to not only look at the extremes because it gets you out of the stock choices and the ordinary, but what I also want to know just out of pure curiosity is what's the single craziest possibility in the whole universe for that particular choice. What it's like wildly crazy. And usually it won't work at all, 
But sometimes you'd be like, well, that's interesting. If I backed it down a few notches, it could start to fit into my arena. And it's really fresh and different and takes the story in a different direction and shakes up the character. And every once in a while, that single craziest idea works brilliantly in a completely unexpected way. I've had that happen to me where I said, well, what's the single craziest idea? And it would be like, well, it would be that. And I'd be like, whoa, I never would have thought of that. And I'm using that. It's great. So it's that's part of attack as a storyteller, just going for it and not just stretching the envelope, envelope, but, you know, obliterating it and just having fun. You know, it's writing fun. But you're using analogies similar to war in some, or combat in some way. Is is going facing the the page every day like combat? It's a good question because it depends in many ways on who you are. Because if you are someone with the martial arts skills of Bruce Lee, say, then you get into the ring with pretty much any fighter, you can figure something out. So it's, so it's not like, God, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm staring at the blank page. It's like, no, I can, I can make this work. You know, this guy weighs 600 pounds, so I gotta figure something out. But, you know, Bruce Lee's gonna bring a lot of stuff to the table. So the more skill you have as a storyteller and as a scriptwriter, as a dramatist, the less intimidated you are by a normal array of writing challenges. Now, <clears throat> you really want to get in over your head. If it's all too easy, then you're not doing your job right. So, like if I'm starting in on a script and it starts to get complex and deep, part of my brain goes, uh-oh, we're getting in over our, my head here. And the other part of my brain goes, yeah, that's, that's good. That's where you want to be. And they say that writers are like show horses. They're not happy unless they're trying to jump over something that could kill them. And I was thinking about that last night and I found a actually much better analogy is that writers are like extreme rock climbers or something. They're not happy climbing something unless it could well kill them. If it's too less of a challenge, they're like, they're bored. That's They get their adrenaline from the fact that nobody's ever climbed this cliff and they're doing it with no ropes and they're hanging by, you know, like two fingers on a piece of rock that big. And they're like, this is fun. This is life. And they don't want to do anything else. They even found that the like the combat nurses and medics who came back from Vietnam couldn't go back to a normal job. It was too, I can't sit in a corner and file papers. So they ended up as like emergency room physicians and, you know, frontline cops. So like they had to be in, in the deep stuff because it, it didn't cut it anymore for them. So the more craft you bring to the table, the less intimidated you are by the material, but you also want to be in over your head. Uh, they said that Bob Marley, who grew up on the water, when they got bored, he and his brother would swim out to sea as far as they could until they were completely exhausted. And then they'd try to make it back to shore. That was their idea of like a fun afternoon. So it's kind of like that. It's like the material should challenge you, but you should also be throwing hand grenades into your own story ideas to make your job harder to challenge yourself. So that like a rock climber is like, I'm not gonna take that safe route. I'm gonna do this dangerous route over here that nobody's ever done before. And it may well kill me, but I can't live without that level of challenge. So I'm not sure if that answered your question exactly, I think it does. I think that basically you're saying you need to be stimulated but not bored and, and it can't be too easy. And so it's kind of like playing chess, a hobbyist playing chess with an expert versus a hobbyist playing chess with another hobbyist. Right. 
and that the, the more substantial your craft as a writer, the less it seems like, how can I possibly do this? You know, it's a job, it's a story. And of course it's challenging and it's hard, but like Bruce Lee facing whatever opponent, he's like, I may get my ass kicked, but I know what I'm doing and I can take this on. You know, I'm not, I'm, it's not like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? It's like, no, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I just have to figure out how to do it for this particular thing.